Good afternoon, everybody. Fusion Phil here with JetCAD Cam, and welcome back to another Fusion Friday. This week, we're going to go ahead and dive into a new toolpath as well as some new tools that have been released from Autodesk, and that is called the Multi Access Finishing Toolpath. Now, full disclaimer, guys, I do have to let you know that you do need the machining extension in order to use these toolpaths. The good news is, is that if you haven't done so yet, you could actually start a two week trial of the manufacturing extension which will come with all the tool paths you see me use today. Now, if you've already burned this or you're looking to purchase the actual extension, feel free to reach out to me directly. We over here at Jet CAD Cam are an Autodesk reseller and would love your business to get you set up with additional features inside of Fusion. So let's go ahead and jump into this part. As you guys can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and use a turbine fin as an example to kind of lay down some of the foundation of how this tool path works, but also the cooler side of the tools themselves. So as you can see, I've already created just a real simple setup. I'm not gonna concern some myself so much with roughing out this part. If I was to rough out this part, I would probably just go in and do a rotary pocket or a rotary contour. Again, just clearing out that actual part so that I'm exposing the actual surfaces I wanna machine. Now you can use this on a lot of other parts too, guys. It's actually starting to turn out to be one of my favorite kind of strategies. When we start to talk about not a whole part, but little areas of the part, and you guys will see why. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go ahead and grab that multi-axis toolpath, right? So this is multi-axis finishing. Again, you do need the extension to have access to open it up. Feel free to start that free trial for two weeks and give it a go and let me know down in the comments whether or not you think the manufacturing extension is worth it with all the other features that we have. Now, I'm gonna run through this and I think you guys are gonna get the gist of this really quick, right? We're very used to kind of a concept of vertical versus horizontal, or in this case, walls versus floors. We also have that concept of you've seen before, there's also in steep and shallow, steep only, shallow only. I'm gonna go ahead and do walls. Now, our actual toolpath strategy themselves, again, these are kind of the same strategies, just being equipped with more features, right? So scallop, as you guys know, it's kind of a consistent step over. In this case, it'll be a step down. Now, what that'll do is it will follow a profile and stick with that profile. Blend, on the other hand, again, we're gonna go ahead and blend between kind of two curves or the outer two profile edges. And then we're gonna use a consistent step over, not a consistent step over, but a consistent number of step overs. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it at scallop. I'm gonna go ahead and do another strategy here a little later. Again, you have your floor versus your ceilings. Again, this is just gonna follow upper curve, lower curve kind of strategies, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define our floor. Then we're gonna define our wall. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just walk you through the rest of this. But the truth is I don't really need to, so why, right? So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And this is actually, I think the most powerful part about this toolpath is we're starting to see new actual tools come into Fusion 360. Now Autodesk, I know you guys watch my videos and I appreciate it please allow us to use these tools on other parts, right? All of us are dying for it. So as you can see, we actually have circle segment tools, everything from barrel, lens, oval, and taper. I'm gonna go ahead and go with a taper tool to start this off. Now, again, I cannot stress this enough so that when I get dirty emails from people, you must be using only the multi-axis finishing tool path as I release this video, which is so you guys know, this doesn't count in the future but you also need the manufacturing extension to be able to do any of this. So we're gonna go into our cutter. And as you guys can see is we actually have, again, just like everything else in Fusion, very straightforward actual defining of our tool. Now, as you can see, we actually have a flute length here. I'm gonna actually increase our flute length a little bit. We also have our degrees of taper. So let's say we wanna go 15 degrees. We also have our upper radius. We have a profile radius. And then we have a lower radius. So we can actually change how this is gonna work based on our tool in itself. Again, that is a varying radius as we go around that tool. Now, if I wanted to, we could also give this a tip diameter. In this case, we're gonna leave everything relatively simple. As I'm showing you guys, I'm just increasing a couple of things to give you a little cleaner profile. So now that we've selected our tool, what you're gonna see is it's now gonna go out and it's gonna generate our tool path. Now, this will take a moment, of course, but what you're seeing in a real world scenario, with the exception of my terrible stock sitting in the way, is we are coming in and we're engaging that tool. And I'll show you where we're engaging that tool here. 
But let's go ahead and simulate this. And for the sake of this, we're going to get the stock out of the way so you guys can see this. But as you can see with our tool coming in, we're actually using the side of that cutter. And technically, we're using it based on a percentage. But as you're seeing, we could take a dramatic step down in this tool. And we could actually finish this surface with our full five axis tilting. Now, on this turbine fin, some of you may or may not know this, but this may or may not be a perfect surface. And again, it's one of those things that you're going to want to do this step by step. In this case, we have a little bit of a collision. Again, guys, don't judge me on this. We're just hitting our stock. Now, we're going around and we're actually finishing that outside profile, right? That's what we're looking at is finishing the surface that you're seeing here and being able to utilize a different strategy as well as a different style tool. Now let's go back and take a look at a few things. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this tool path. And again, as you guys saw, we could switch out a few small things to get comfortable here. We're gonna go for a blend strategy now. Another pro tip, if you set your tolerance much higher, I did a video on this, we can calculate these tool paths much faster so that we can get an idea of what the tool is going to do long before we go for accuracy, right? So again, as you're seeing these two tool paths, they do look quite a bit different. And I'm going to highlight both of them to see that they're very close because they are respecting a step down. The difference again, of course, is that Scallop is just putting paths on this with our step over, or in this case, step down being respected. Now, the blend strategy is respecting the number of step overs long before, right? So again, as you're going to get some fanning where you could be deeper in the backside, shallower in the front side here, things of that nature. Again, just simple changes when you're getting used to tool pass and fusion make a huge difference. Again, as you're seeing here, as this looks to be a much cleaner and smoother tool path as we go around up until we hit our collision, of course. But again, this is the great thing about fusion and being able to simulate this in real time and get an idea of not only how the tool pass is going to react, but you could even start to get an idea of what is that surface finish. And again, you could turn up your settings in simulation to almost create a direct representation. Now, I'm going to swap this out. We're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate again. I'm going to go back in. We're going to select a different tool. Let's now give this a oval cutter. Now, some of you are going to be curious about an oval cutter. And again, just like any tool inside of Fusion, you could switch these on the fly from this menu instead. But what we're getting here is we're actually getting a very large radius that's basically transitioning from the tangent down and around. Again, we're not getting three radiuses here. We're getting basically two radiuses, right? So what I want is I would like a much bigger radius in there. So let's go for like a two inch radius. Again, I'm going to get a hundred thou radius down here at the bottom. And now as you're seeing is we're coming tangent down into this curve and then we're switching to a different curve down here in the bottom. So again, this is a full radius versus a taper or a hard flat kind of along that edge, right? So again, I'm going to stick with what we have here. We're going to go ahead and select that tool. And of course, we're going to go ahead and let Fusion do its thing. Now, some of you may be questioning one, why did I crash my tool path? Well, because I'm really, really good at that. And what it's telling me, the shaft length must be greater than the flute length. So let's go back and fix that. So we're going to go ahead and edit that tool. We're going to go into this cutter menu. And now we're going to up our flute length to two inches just to get it nice and clear of everything as it was yelling at me about. Again, even the best of us make mistakes on the fly as we try to do more and more complex stuff. So what you're going to notice as you guys are seeing here is this strategy is kind of almost identical, right? Maybe there's a little different step down. That's fine. But now I want to show you the value and how we can actually tell Fusion with this toolpath, where do we want to engage on the edge of this tool, right? So we're at a pretty steep angle right now. More than acceptably works. Again, we're going to duplicate that toolpath using Control D. I'm actually going to go over here to the multi-axis area, I apologize guys there, and we're going to say lead and contact point. Again, we're seeing such a different strategy when we start to get into these more or less niche tool paths, tool paths that not everybody needs, but those of you that do need it are probably going to use it all the time. But instead of actually giving it a specific point on the tool, what you're noticing here is I can actually adjust this 
to be able to go in and say, you know, in this case, my preferred angle is going to be, let's say, 30 degrees. My minimum is going to be 20. And now my maximum is going to be 40. So before it was 50 and then a low of 40 and a low of 60. But as you're going to see now is we're going to, again, get a different strategy. What you're going to notice is, is between these two strategies, our new strategy is actually leaned out more, right? And the reason why it's leaned out more is because we're using a lower percentage, which means we're lower on the tool, right? So again, here was our original at 50, and that 50 is somewhere right about here as we're touching our part. Now coming back with the idea of 30, we're much lower here with the 30%. If I wanted to do this one more time, we can go back. Again, I have that ability to go in and say, you know what, I actually want to use 70%. And then I want a lower of maybe 60. I'm just using variables of 10, guys. You don't have to do this. I think a lot of people may confuse that at the end of the day. But as you're going to see, this is going to be a much more vertical toolpath now versus our more horizontal toolpath and even our original toolpath when we were using 50%. So it's kind of a neat thing that you're no longer really controlling the multi-axis side of this by tilting the machine and forcing a bunch of stuff. We're actually letting Fusion do all of that decision making on its own. Well, let's go back and look at a few other tools inside that tool library, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that original path again. We're going to duplicate it, and we're going to throw it all the way down here to the bottom. And again, it's always nice to start with a clean path for a lot of this stuff, as you guys see. So again, we now have that ability to go back in. I'm actually going to skip the lens cutter. And for those of you wondering what a lens cutter is, is we'll go ahead and click in here. What's really being defined on the lens cutter is down here at the tip. So now I have had a lot of people reach out to me about maybe you buy a face mill that cuts a profile very similar to this. Again, it's a very niche thing, but a lens cutter is one of those things that are great for like floors, right? Because you have such a large radius without having a full ball end mill that comes way out wider than the actual tool. This allows you to get much closer to your corners, much closer to your walls. Again, speeding up your cycle time because if you're making the radius of the tool larger, you don't have to take as close a step overs depending on what your surface finish is. So again, very straightforward. You have your outer, you have your inner, your flute length, pretty straightforward, guys. There's nothing too crazy here, and you can make that radius about whatever you want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and cancel because I want to jump back and I want to get you guys a barrel cutter. So again, these all kind of have a strategy to them. So each one of these circle segment cutters is going to be app implemented whether you're using maybe the walls versus the floors as we saw with the lens cutter. Now, again, cutter profiles are pretty straightforward. I'm actually going to just leave everything default here. Again, you guys, upper radius, mid radius, lower radius, everything and anything is definable here. And again, you can change that more or less depending on what you need for that specific cutter, right? So as you're going to see from a toolpath strategy standpoint, is what's going to happen here is this guy is going to actually stay very vertical as it runs down. It will tilt a little bit. And again, remember, we're using that 50% engagement location. So again, as 50% on that profile face is where we want it to touch the part. You guys have full access to this to go in. Again, we wanted to swap that out. If we actually wanted to take that down to 20%, maybe a low of 10, a high of, and again, you guys, Feel free to play around with this as much as possible. Maybe we go 15 and 25, right? Now you're going to see that tool gets leaned out because once again, we're at the percentage from the bottom up, right? So as you see here, we can tilt this tool out. We can run around this part. We have that full capabilities of being able to go in and actually utilize different cutters in Fusion or different tools or different end mills to achieve a completely different actual finishing strategy on our parts using different settings now that concludes this video guys i apologize if it ran long i also apologize that i'm not diving too deep into this i just want to show you guys the power of what this toolpath has as well as the new features of the tooling inside of fusion now if you guys want to dive deeper into this at any time feel free to shoot me an email i'm happy to do one-on-one -on -one sessions i also like it when you guys leave comments down below on certain things that you guys want to see inside the software or certain videos that you have questions about like always, have a great rest of your day.